All right, if I can have your attention here in the media center, we will continue with today's media availabilities here at Talladega Super Speedway for the Alabama 500 with Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford. Joey, you're going for your third straight fall Talladega win here. What makes you so good at Super Speedways? Oh, that's a, a good question. Um, I think there's a lot of different things that uh, we've been able to um, kind of hone in on is uh, maybe our, our strengths when we come to super speedways one i think we have good cars um i think that's important um, when we come to these tracks and then uh you know you gotta have good communication between yourself and your spotter uh and, and try to make the right decisions when you're out there um you know when to when to push when to make the big moves when to uh maybe chill out a little bit and make sure you have something to race with at the end uh the strategy of these races have has come into play quite a few times Todd's did a good job with that um, you know, without it sounding too uh, basic, but those are the, the main things I think that make, uh, you know, good speedway racers, um, you know, knowing when to push and when not to is, is probably the, the key thing, um, you know, when to make those moves. And because every move comes with a risk uh, and, and being able to weigh that, that risk and reward out uh, in a tenth of a second is, is the hardest part, but the most important part. Outstanding with that. We'll open up for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start here with Jordan. Then we'll go to Mike, Jeff, and Claire. Jordan Bianchi, SB Nation. And Joey, you're, you're not in the playoffs. You have two teammates that are. Obviously, you want to win this race, but it is also in the back of your mind is maybe helping them out as much as you can this weekend, or is that even in your mind at all? Yeah, well, the, I mean, right off the bat, every time we come to a super speedway like Talladega or Daytona, uh, the first thing we say is how we all work together right because we need to be able to work together to win the race um so whether it's 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 team penske or fords uh in general um you know we all need to be willing to work together uh to be able to keep ourselves up front you know i think when you look at the daytona 500 from a couple of years ago when uh the toyotas worked so well together it forever changed how super speedway racing will be um and, and now uh other other manufacturers, other teams have figured that out, and they're able to break them apart, um, which which keeps it kind of racy out there, which is a good thing. But, uh, you know, that's definitely something that, that has changed us. So we all need to be able to be willing to work together. Um, but at the end of the race, hey, it's it's game time, man. We're all going out there for the win. Uh, so we want to position ourselves to, to win the race. It's important for us to win uh, just as much as uh, anybody else right now. So, um, you know, the, the goal is to go out there and put our shell pencil forward in, in victory lane again and try to make it three in a row for the fall race. That's that's our goal. Um, but we also need to keep in mind that, uh, you know, we want to work together with our teammates, make sure they score good points uh, for the playoffs. Um, but we also need to work together to even have a shot to win. So it all just kind of happens naturally. We'll go to Mike, Jeff, Claire, and then Bob. Mike Henry, USA Today. Uh, two things, Joey. Do you, uh, this not being an elimination race now, does that change things, you think, from a strategy perspective or, or any kind of approach? Yeah, for some, for sure. I think that the fact that it's not an elimination race and it is, and they have stages. I think those two things are the best things to happen uh, for Talladega, uh, you know, for, for a couple different reasons. I mean, we've seen in the past that drivers come in here and say, I just got to finish 25th. I finish 25th, doesn't matter what happens. Well, and then they just ride around in the back all day until it's the end of the race and they go up and finish 25th. Well, that's pretty boring. That's not, that's not what anybody wants to see. Fans don't want to see that. So NASCAR has made some good decisions, I think, by making this the, you know, not, not the final race in this uh, segment um, or round. Uh, and then also adding the stages, you can't afford to give up those stage points. You know, you can finish fifth and score no stage points. It's really not that good of a day. Uh, you know, you got to be able to go up there and, and, and score those points. So uh, those two things are great for super speedway racing and particularly the fall Talladega race uh, when there's so much on the line to force race teams to go out there and race. We'll go to Jeff, what, Claire, Bob, and Dustin. Let me get one more. Um, what, what's your perspective on Toyota having won the first four playoff races? Uh, is there some kind of dominating thing going on there, or is it just? Uh, no, I don't think they're dominating. They just won the first four. No, <laughs> no, they're not much better than anybody else. <laughs> uh, I'd say they're they're doing pretty good. Um, they seem to be pretty fast. Uh, that's um, that's that one's pretty easy to to see. Uh, they've they're ahead of everybody. 
no no doubt they're they're the best cars out there on the racetrack and um you know a lot of that's because they've hey they've done their homework they did they made some great decisions and they're uh, reaping the reward now um you know good for them not good for us we gotta go to work we, we must work hard on our cars and, and make sure that we get faster and um you know we all talk about talladega being the you know great equalizer yeah it is it's a lot of times um you know i feel like we have a great shot this week i feel like maybe uh, for our race team it might be our best shot uh to, to go out here and grab a win um you know because the the advantage that the toyotas have uh doesn't sh it, i don't think it'll show up as much at a racetrack like here or martinsville or or things like that tracks jeff, like that jeff go ahead jeff gluck from jeffgluck.com joey uh we talked you, you were mentioning about the stage points how crazy is that going to make the middle part of the race during that scramble late in stage one and stage two i mean are you anticipating like the same sort of craziness that happens at the end of a race or is it not going to be quite that intense i don't think it'll be as intense as the end of the race but i do think the intensity level will definitely pick up and i would suspect you know if you're 15th or so you're going to keep racing all the way to the end but i think if you're going to be 20th i'm back is the risk of getting up there to get one point maybe maybe you might not even get that is it worth the risk of crashing and getting no points the rest of the day those are the th those are the decisions that drivers will have to weigh out in in the heat of the battle out there saying okay do i want to get up there and try to grab a point or two and, and risk not finishing the race uh you know i think those are things you're gonna have to weigh out for sure but that intensity level will pick up as each lap gets closer to the end of the stage um and and the decisions that drivers will make will be kind of interesting uh depending on what they're trying to do Um, man, I'm wired one way, dude. That's, <laughs> I got one gear and it's wide open, man. That's all I got. So, uh, for, for me, it, it keeps it pretty simple. When I come to a super speedway, it's <laughs> go to the front, stay in the front, race hard. And I think that, uh, shows in our results. We either win or we crash and uh, I'm okay with that. I, I'm okay with that. I, I don't really, I mean, honestly, and I've said this a, a lot here the last few weeks that fifth, second. 15th crashing what's the difference right it's all about winning um that's what we're here to do and that's what we're going to do is just to go out there and race for the win um and that means you got to battle up front all day long learn as much as you can about your car get it as best as you can for the end of the race know who you're racing around you to, to go out there and try to win it claire go ahead claire b lang series xm nascar radio joey you're an accomplished restrictor plate racer but how did you learn to do that you can only learn on the track take yourself back to maybe your first Talladega race or when you didn't even really know exactly what restrictor plate racing was, how did you learn it? You know, being a student of the sport is the most important part, I think, of, of super speedway racing. My, my attitude when I first came into speedway racing was, ah, it's a crapshoot. You know, if you're in the right lane at the right time, you kind of work your way up there. And and then I started realizing that, like, you know, you see Junior and Kenseth and Brad and, you know, uh, you know Kevin, there's a lot of Denny, there's a lot of guys that are just happen to always be there. And I thought, oh, it's, they're not just that lucky, you know. <laughs> they, they must be pretty good at this. So, um, you know, trying to understand the draft and the moves that the guys make, um, watching a lot of film, watching, uh, you know, just remembering what happens in the past. Under, like I said, understand what your car can and can't do. The communication between yourself and your spotters is ultra, ultra important because you got to get that data from them before you can make those decisions. Um, and making them quick and being bold about it and being confident about when you make those decisions is all about preparation. So you got to have that prep work um, to go out there and, and be successful. And, and that and, the, and it's always evolving. That's what's fun about super speedway racing. It's it's never the same. Like I talked about a couple years ago, how it, how it changed when, when the Toyotas started working well together. Uh, you know, a few years before that, we used to do the, the, the tandem draft. Right when two cars would hook up and, and go forever, right? How awesome was that? So there's so many. It, it changes all the time, but I can see why it's so exciting for fans. You know, I, I was watching it on the way down here. Um, I was watching the race from the spring. I mean, this is awesome. Like this is like a lot of fun to watch. Uh, just as a as a fan of the sport, which I am, uh, it, it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, just the way cars are moving around and, and the decisions that drivers are making on the racetrack uh, at every moment is pretty entertaining was it nerve-wracking at first though when you didn't know what you were doing i'm sure i don't know what i'm doing now but <laughs> uh 
it's uh it's nerve wracking for sure all the time um you know but i i'm my first daytona 500 i didn't make it very far before i watered up i remember the first time i drove a cup car at daytona was uh shootout practice in daytona and uh i remember swatting flies in there just you know turning left and right and just out of control and don't know what i'm doing I thought, oh my God, how am I going to make it 500 miles? Which I made it about 40 laps, so I was right. So uh, it, it's not easy. It's not a crapshoot. Uh, you know, the, the, you can't control your destiny 100% here, but you kind of can at the same time. You know, you, you control the position that you've put yourself into. Um, you know, maybe sometimes you know I've been crashed out running third here and say, man, I couldn't do anything about that. I'm as close as I can be to the front where I think I'm safe, and you know they wadded up, you know, right behind me and the crash worked forward and got me you know i mean there's there's something that can happen all the time so you got to go in kind of with the attitude that hey whatever happens happens but uh at the same time you, i believe you do control your destiny i don't believe in luck really so i, I believe you control where you're, where you're at all the time we're gonna go to bob dustin reed and then lee uh bob Hocker, cspn dale jr talked about this week how he's gonna have that helmet cam and he's it motivates him he says because he wants to put stuff on film fans want to see <laughs> and he's also talked about how like paint schemes motivate him is is that true with all drivers that they that they're really motivated by being part of the show and doing showman type things or is he kind of just a different breed uh i think every driver is different right and every every person's different everyone in here has a different uh, way of writing a good story or whatever it may be um you know for for junior that that motivates him and it's good that he found something that motivates him uh, for me, I see a trophy and I go, I want that, <laughs> you know, that's what I want. Uh, whether it puts on a good show or not, honestly, I don't care. I just want the trophy. I want to win. Uh, yeah, not really. I just want, I mean, really the stat, sometimes a cool trophy maybe adds a little bit more to it, you know, and you see something that's really neat. Um, you know, you think maybe you need to have in the house or something like that, but, um, you know, really, I mean, each win is so important, and especially for us in, in the position we're in right now, I mean, any win would feel amazing at this point. So uh, we don't really need any more motivation than, than what we got. Um, but, yeah, every driver kind of has their own thing. You know, maybe there's something special on your car that weekend. You know, a lot of times maybe you have something uh, that's close to your heart or is very authentic to you. Uh, you know, you want to make the most out of that. There's times that you'll, um, you know, want to win more, but I don't really know how to push harder than what I already am. Dustin, go ahead. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Can you explain the challenges and difficulties of when you're leading and trying to k maintain control of both lines, and also the opposite situation when you're in the second line, the second row, trying to get by somebody who's doing that, the leader who's doing that blocking and trying to control both lanes? It's very challenging, and it depends on obviously the type of car you're racing. Are you racing an Xfinity car to a Cup car? It takes a completely different mindset on, on staying out front. And uh, you know, when you're out front, you never look where you're going. You know, you're, you're constantly looking in the mirror, and where that car behind you goes is where you go. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, I've heard fighter pilots when they fly in formation they stare at the one plane if that plane drives into the ground they're all going into the ground together it's the same thing if the car behind me drives into the into the wall i'm probably going into the wall with them from in front of them uh you know because you're you're constantly in the mirror when you're in the lead you're listening to information from your spotter where runs are coming from how fast they're coming and there's times you can't stop them you know but there's times that you know you maybe don't want to get too far in front of the pack and you know are they two or three wide how tight is the whole pack in the mirror you can see uh, only a certain amount, you know, you can see a fair amount, um, you know, maybe if, if you're in the corner and the way the banking is, you can see a couple rows back, but sometimes on the straightaway when they're tucked up right on you, you can only see that car that's right there in your mirror. You can't see everything else that's going on. So the, the spotter painting a picture is what I call it. It's paint me a picture of what's going on. Uh, it really helps me, um, make the decisions on the racetrack as the leader. And, and when you're behind a car, you got to do both, right? So now you're trying to pass the, the guy in front of you. So you're, you're watching where his, he's at, but you also got to make the decision on what's going on behind you and what lane you want to pick uh, and also understanding who that person is. Um, there's some drivers that, that will push and push, push, push until they get up front and then they'll try to pass you. And then there's other drivers that will try to slip you any chance they can uh, to put themselves in a better position to get to the lead. And understanding who those people are and, and, and when they're going to do it uh, and when those runs are coming are the most important things, I guess, to think of while you're doing this at 200 miles an hour. So. 
it's not boring. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things going on uh, that you're trying to process at a really quick rate. Reed, go ahead. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire. Given the fact that you want to win every race you enter, um, is your focus now more on the, the rest of this year, or is it more long-term on trying to leapfrog ahead for the start of next year? Both. Um, to answer your question, uh, you know, we, we got to think about how do we make our cars better for next year because, um, you know, I, I guess my biggest fear would be doing the same thing we did this year, right? I don't want to go through this feeling again. It's, it's not any fun. Uh, I want to go out there and I want to be racing for a championship. Uh, so uh, I'm motivated, believe me, to, to make sure this never happens again. Um, so, you know, looking at a, at a big picture when we're at the shop, how are we approaching, um, you know, different – parts on the car, you know, different, you know, just the outlook of how we do things. All of that needs to be looked at and, and, and understood and, and maybe changed um, as the sport evolves. Um, so, yes, we need to look at that. But we're also in the season right now, right? We're, we're, we still got quite a few races to go, um, and we have opportunity to win, uh, and we need to take advantage of that. So we don't give up on this year. We want to build momentum for next year. So by being on the racetrack, we're going to try to make everything we can out of it. But – from a global view, we need to understand the changes we're going to have to make to be more successful next year. We'll go to Lee, we'll go to Kelly, and wrap up with Chris Knight. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. A fan asked you on Sirius this morning, what do you do to keep motivated and said how much you know class you had shown in this tough season of yours. Um, clearly, you have a lot going on off the track, and you know, from <laughs> philanthropic to what's going, you're having a baby, things of that nature. But um, how do you get out of bed, and you know, you just say today's a new day, and I'm going to make the best, pretty much. That's pretty much. I mean, you wake up in the morning with the right attitude. Life's all about attitude and, and the perspective that you have on life. And um, you know, a bad day at the racetrack is better than a lot of you know, kids stays that I see with the foundation that, that we that we work with and, and the life that they've been dealt and the cards they've been dealt to, to try to handle. Uh, man, missing the playoffs doesn't sound that bad when you meet these kids. Um, so I think keeping your life in perspective is important and, and knowing that, uh, you know, every every morning God gives you a great opportunity to, to make something happen. And, uh, and I, sh I need to take advantage of that opportunity every day. It doesn't mean it always goes the way I want it to or, to, you know, the way, uh, you know, I think it should be. But, um, you know, I can work towards that goal. Uh, so I'm, I guess I'm grateful for every day that I get uh, to go out there and, and do my job and to try to make a difference in our world. And, um, you know, and if it, sometimes it doesn't go your way, right? Like, like this year didn't go my way, but uh, I, say I have to stay positive and I have to uh, understand that, hey, I am living my dream, right? This is what I wanted to do my whole life. Since I was five years old, all I wanted to do is drive race cars. Uh, and not everybody gets to live their dream. So it's, uh, I still think it's pretty cool, even when it's not going as great as you want it to. Thanks. We'll go to Kelly, and then we'll wrap up with Chris Knight. Kelly Crown Racer.com. Joey, you made your 300 start earlier this year. Brad makes his this weekend, this Sunday. Uh, do you have a favorite Brad story or memory of, of being his <laughs> teammate? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> trying to think of one I should say. Uh, shouldn't say. Um, we, we, <laughs> uh, it, it, I guess, I mean, Brad and I have become really good friends. Um, you know, and, and part of the 300 start, that's really cool. Um, and, and the stat that's amazing to me is how many drivers have won on the 300 start, uh, and, and which I was able to do earlier this year. Um, sort of, kind of, I guess. I don't know how you guys want to look at that, but I call it a win. Um, but... <laughs> whatever <laughs> take your cucumbers and stick it i think it's a <laughs> it was a win uh but anyways um <laughs> that's funny uh i don't know brad and i like i said we've become great friends we hang out with each other a lot um i i i, I use a funny story about brad at least we were um we went over to his house i think it was maybe scarlet's first birthday or something and he's like we're all just hanging out he goes let's do something manly you know and i'm like what do you want to do? Like, you're all hanging out, and he goes, let's play croquet. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so, but he was serious, and I thought it was the funniest thing. Uh, we got a good kick out of it. He's a very good croquet player, if you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> never would have thought that. But um, he's a good person, you know, and I think that's something that, that a lot of people don't see is that he's, uh, he's very competitive. We're a lot alike in a lot of different ways, but he's got a big heart. 
Um, and I think a lot of people don't see that because when we're at the racetrack, we're, we're in race mode and we're in work mode. But um, when you get people away from the racetrack, you, meet, you start to meet who they really are. And, uh, you know, I, I feel um, you know, grateful to have a, a friend like Brad and a teammate like him as well. Final question, Chris Knight. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Joey, after being so good at Charlotte in 2016, you guys struggled for speed and balance in 2017. Were you disappointed by that, especially how well you typically run at Charlotte? And did you ever figure out what the problem was because uh, you guys weren't good in both races? That's a good point. Um, yeah, we, um, we tried something new when we got there Friday because uh, we're in a position that we can take advantage of of uh where we're at by trying something different and have nothing to lose right we, we've never been in this spot before and hopefully never in it again but we can take advantage of trying something new uh it did not work right? we qualified awful uh and then we tried to put in a setup that was closer to our teammates um and, and took off from there we ran you know what 30 laps or so until uh the nose got knocked in and that was pretty much the end of the day. We kept trying to fix that and trying to keep it from overheating. And, um, you know, and then we're, before you know it, you're three laps down, you're trying to just finish the race. So, um, you know, we didn't really get the opportunity to really show what we had, but I don't think it was very much either at the same time. You know, our, our, our organization uh, as a whole was, was off in Charlotte. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say, like you said, Charlotte's one of our best tracks. It's been a good track for Brad and, and Ryan Blaney as well. Um, and none of us really showed the speed uh, that we thought we would. You know, we, we started to show signs of hope at Chicago when, uh, you know, I feel like uh, all three of our cars were, you know, top five contenders. Um, you know, hoping, you know, that they, we continue when we go to a mile and a half like Charlotte, but it, it didn't. So, um, yeah, and Charlotte's unique, right? I mean, it has a big landing event in turn one. It's bumpy uh, through three and four. Um, it's unique and sets itself apart a little bit. So Kansas will be kind of interesting to see uh, you know, the type of speed we got. But, yeah, it was not a fun day for sure. Joey, thanks for the time and good luck on Sunday. No problem. Thanks, guys.